Hey, it's Luke from Out of Darts. We're coming at you with our 2023 top 10 or more lean improvements. For those that are not familiar with lean, it's a concept that originally came out of Japan, specifically Toyota. There's a fantastic book on the subject called The Toyota Way, though my introduction to it was through Two Second Lean, which is Paul Akers. Paul Akers runs Fast Cap up in Northern Washington. Paul, if you're watching this, I would desperately love a tour but I don't quite meet your threshold. So reach out if you happen to see this. I love what you're doing and we're only three, four hours away from each other. This is our third year, I think, of publishing these videos. You don't have to have watched the other years, but essentially Lean is about making life easier. It's about making your work more pleasurable, making having your tools accessible where you need them, having the controls and the guidelines to make everything simpler. Running a warehouse is really complicated and the biggest thing you can do is to constantly improve. Now we here at Out of Darts don't do as much as I wish we did. There's always more to do, but I think doing these yearly videos at least commits us to showing off and sharing what we've done. So the first is actually the camera you're seeing me through right now. It is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This is a little tiny camera that we now use for all of our overhead content and shorts. Now it's not exactly tuned in for this setup, but it is turned out to be really great for overheads and videos. It's got this amazing little wireless mic that allows you to connect. It pairs automatically and it is just a sweet little package. And while I'm looking at my phone, you can see that I actually have control over the camera. I can start, stop, zoom in, reposition and kind of monitor what's going on or toss it back in my pocket. Next is our dedicated IT station. We needed a place to deal with all of the cameras, the equipment, and the hard drives, the backup hard drives, and the laptop, and we've just finally made a spot where that lives permanently by itself. It's also where all our cameras gear hangs out, and we've got it reasonably organized, though it's probably due for an overhaul in 2024. Next is keeping these tables clean. It's really easy to get things completely covered in garbage and projects and not pick up as you go. And it's one of my big pet peeves. So it's been nice to actually have these tables available at any time for a project, but we put the stuff away when we're done. Over here behind me, you'll see despite being in the middle of our busy season, it is the 21st of December and we are very busy. These tables are reasonably clean up here so that if you need to come up here and start a project, you've got the room. This is the area where we make the mess and it's still not messy. While not a whole lot has changed in our shipping department, though we do have ideas for 2024 to improve that, one thing we did do was get brown paper tape. Now we have standard paper tape that has our logo on it, but because of the ammo and dart symbols, it was getting rejected by customs in multiple foreign countries. So now we have a standard brown one. And we used to do it in this dispenser, and we did that for about a year or more. And uh, then one day I finally came and shipped myself and realized how horrendous using these manual machines is when you're used to one of these automated machines. These spit it out real fast, so we bought a sister machine to the one we have, and you can just shoot out labels real quick and adhere them to your packages. I don't know what to stick this to now. Oops. Oh, hey there, come on in. It may sound odd to make improvements in the bathroom, but hey, why not? We got two soap dispensers that we don't have to fill as often or as frequently. They also don't tip over and cause a whole bunch of extra mess. And over here, we've got a hand dryer. I don't know if you can hear me anymore. Previously, I was laundering towels so we wouldn't waste so much paper and now we're just using the hand dryer which saves both money and time and it's just quick and easy. Another huge improvement in the shop overall and some of our actual customers have probably noticed is that we have massively reduced the number of SKUs we have. We dropped about 250 SKUs in 2023 and that makes it both easier for us to customer service, support, maintain, order, do inventory, and keep other items in stock that are more important. Because why keep an item in stock that sells two units every three months? While I'm on that subject, there's still a clearance sale. We're trying to get rid of more stuff. Go buy stuff. So I wanted to tell you about how efficient we've got in our receiving department as far as clearing things out because there is not a lot of room here, but then a shipment showed up literally today. So it is what it is. A big improvement over in our prep department where all the 3D parts get put together and checked is that we got rid of all of the prep cards, which was a card that told you how to prep it. And there was a stack that nobody ever looked at. And we put them on a computer 
where they can be searched and indexed and really easily referenced. Makes it much easier when you actually do need to know or learn how to prep one of the new parts. This is our grocery department. This is where all of our hardware sits that is not a key component for other parts of the warehouse. I first came in here and put all the stuff in and organized it in order of different sizes. Then my team told me that they were going up here over and over to get the most common size, and right here was the least common size. So I had my team reorganize this based on frequency of use, and they simply memorize where the parts are, rather than trying to organize everything in numerical order, despite numerical order feeling like the most obvious choice. Another really silly small improvement was just simply getting more of these label makers. And these we use for our packing slips, our kit checklists, and a variety of other labeling uses around the warehouse, but we would spend time going from station to station printing them. So now every station has one. We've got one here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and we have them here. Two different sizes, and this one runs off of a mobile battery bank that we recharge, so you can run around with your laptop, charge your laptop, and print any of the various labels you need to anywhere in the warehouse. And finally, if you don't have one in front of you, these two are wireless along with our regular wireless paper printer. We've done a bit of redecorating in here, which is somewhat superficial, but we've also reorganized the flow and made things a little bit more clean and tidy. We've got waiting on response and pre-order shelves as well as existing project shelves. Over here, we've got all of our existing projects that we're working on right now. Each one's labeled with a bin of its own and all the parts and things go inside. And we do a little courtesy tag at the end. So when you're done with the project, you can rip that label right off and it usually comes off clean. While we're in the office, I don't have enough patches on this wall for the size of this hobby. So if you see me in person, I want your patch. We don't really have a kitchen here at Out of Darts, but we did reorganize the snacks. And one of my employees now takes care of ordering and uh, finding all the stuff. While I was at it, we switched from a water cooler to a water filter cooler, meaning that there's no five gallon jugs that have to either be delivered or refilled or gone back and forth to Home Depot over and over. Right next to that, a new fridge because our old one didn't properly freeze anything and did not have enough room for the number of people here. Last year, we added location zones to all of our SKUs in the warehouse. But one of the things we didn't do was label the overstock bin. So one of our newest employees had a great idea, which was to just put the actual stock location on the overstock bin. So when you do find a bin like this, you would know where it gets restocked to. Likewise, the next thing we're trying to implement is bread, breadcrumb trails all across the warehouse, but that's gonna have to wait for 2024 to be rolled out everywhere. We've switched our whole shop to print on demand. That means every order that comes in, we are printing the parts for it that day or the next day. Previously, we were printing ahead on way too many colors and we ended up with bins and bins and bins of overstock that unfortunately may never get sold. We've been giving these away at local events and things like that, but at the end of the day, this new system means that we're only printing the things we actually need and we might print ahead on just a few items that we know sell every day or go into really common kits. This has saved a ton of extra time from printing the part, moving the part around, organizing the part, labeling the bin the part goes in. Now it just gets printed, prepped, put straight into the bin order, and then it gets packed. Another subtle but large improvement here in the warehouse was our picking path, and really just the picking order for 3D printed parts. What we used to do was send 3D printed orders without the rest of their items all the way over to print department to get printed. After that, they'd lag slightly while they needed to have the rest of the items picked. Our new process involves picking all of the regular retail items first, building the kits, and then taking it over to the 3D printer world so it can get printed. That way, when it's printed, we haven't sold out of something else by accident that was already claimed on the first order or gone to an inventory bin and, and said, oh, hey, we still have some of these. Let's put this back in stock. And uh, it's alleviated a lot of inventory issues overall. If it's not obvious, there are a lot of times in this business where we don't feel like we know what we're doing. Scott Galloway, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, authors, and writers has a great quote. He says, nobody is ever really qualified to do anything they do, and that's entrepreneurship. And I couldn't agree more. Another improvement here at Out of Darts is that we're going to focus more of our media time on shorts and short form content. We're still gonna make some long form content, but some of the videos that we've put out have taken a tremendous amount of effort, time, and so much editing on Perry's end, and ultimately performed very poorly. And we feel like in shorts, we have an opportunity to do a lot of educational content, behind the scenes, and snappy short form content that we will, really wouldn't be able to engage in a normal video. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, as far as a direction. 
We're not shifting 100%, but it is something we're changing. And I think it's going to allow us to create more content that's more useful for our customers and for our viewers. Thank you so much for watching this lean video. I hope these have been useful to you. The number of times I've had people tell me they like these videos has been substantial. So we're gonna keep doing this. It's a great way to hold ourselves accountable. I even made us film this when we hadn't tidied up, cleaned up, or done any additional organization before filming. So the tour of the warehouse you just got and the glimpses behind the scenes is us at our worst on December 21st, right after the busiest time of the year. I'm really, proud of my team. They've all come up with great ideas themselves. So thank you to all of them and thank you for watching. Let us know if you have any other ideas that you've seen in our warehouse that we should be implementing or just ideas in general that have worked for you. We're going to read all the comments because this is a rather unique video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Luke without a darts.